But never I say my pen dream TV. Pen dream TV there. I see them. Yopo. Me ma wa kwa ba edi ba pen dream TV. So make sure say obe subscribe to channel. No no click the bell. So say the the news to our on subscribe to me. I can in terms of what the affair. So make sure say obe like it. Now nah, what comment? No one share. I'm a full frost on Saka. Now comment session. How so? No person watch it. I'm a bit to me. I do. I do. I'm sure. I to hold on. Now man for so. I'm a bit kind kind. Now only say pen dream TV there. Any in some of your cause or Ghana and politics. I'm only a day banner. I'm Saka. I'm a day abroad. Tina so. Me me video. I in Saka. I person no watch it. I'm a day banner. Tina. Me one more day. I'm sure. So be here video way. I'm a day see every year. Now watch it. I'm a day. I'm comment session. I see. The vice president had adopted a rather novel kind of strategy to campaign where he would make sure that every supporter or every person world we shall follow him will have to join the campaign bus. Mm -hmm. And the campaign bus will send us through all this area, except where it is hard to reach, where these uh, buses may not be able to go to some villages, then they will be resorting to uh, limited use of uh, these uh, SUVs or uh, these long cruisers. Mm -hmm. That simplicity, that modesty, that kind of approach resonates with the times that you don't go as a presidential candidate presenting yourself, conducting, I mean, engage in conduct that seems to suggest that you are not sensitive to the plights of the Ghanaian people. You are not just even aware of what the times are. Mm. So that approach is what we need to commend the vice president on. The vice president also approach of reaching out to relevant to religious leaders, chiefs, market women and the youth i mean drivers that approach because you see the economy is going to be an important issue in this election mm -hmm. once the economy is going to be an important issue in the election the vice president will need to have a message telling them that look cost of living has been you have been one of the people ravaged by inflation that when we have inflation skyrocketing you are those who feel it the most we must put in place measures, and we are putting in place measures, and these are the measures we are putting in place to address that. The vice president also, and then, I mean, you could find some of them on the, on the newspapers, on the, I mean, the front pages of the newspapers. Issues of jobs and security of jobs is one of the things the vice president is focused on. How do we create the, the, the jobs? so desirous of these young people that young people graduating from the university can have a place to work, not necessarily in the public sector, but how do we spur the private sector growth so that it will be a catalyst to the creation of jobs in the economy? That the vice president is clear, and the vice president is highlighting as one of the areas he intends to focus on. The vice president, I mean, adult is, and let me just even a bit backtrack that we've not formally launched our, our campaign manifesto. And the team working on the manifesto, they are just on the I mean, ending part. Committees are putting together their various drafts for the secretariat to synchronize and synthesize all these various parts of the I mean, manifesto and present that to the Ghanaian people. But the vice president is giving us, if you like, uh, 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 anchors of this manifesto. What he goes around talking about are actually the cardinal points of that manifesto that when you have the final draft, You'll be, you'll be clear in your mind that this is what the vice president was talking about. Aside that, the vice president understands that you cannot come to this election. It's going to be, and if you also read the press statement by the director of communication of the campaign, it's going to be a contest of character, a contest of, I mean, a, a records, a contest of message. Okay, these three major parts will, be, will play very well in the election. And when you say quantum of record, the vice president will not run away. And I remember recently he called that he will not shy away from any presidential debate. That when I'm called to account as a vice president what I was able to support the president to do, I will do that with my head straight and I will do that without any fear. He's clear on that. So when it comes to the MPP record, the vice president is willing to defend that. He is willing to also admit where the government has not been able to I meet the expectation of the Ghanaian people on the basis of which he's seeking a mandate to come and then finish that particular project. And that is on the contest. The contest of character. It is going to be Mr. John Drahman and Muhammad against Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. A known quantity vis-a-vis -a, -vis a relatively unknown quantity. Who, who is the relatively unknown one? Dr. Baumia is a relatively unknown quantity. Okay. 
So that personality, the two would be, have to be assessed by the Ghanaian people. Mm -hmm. And in assessing them, the Ghanaian would look at, okay, John Bahama as vice president for relatively some seven years of, um, of governance or seven and a half years, what was he able to achieve? Mr. John Rahman as president for four to five years, what he was able to achieve. And they will compare that to that of Mr. Uh, Bahumia for eight years of, seven to eight years of, uh, of being the vice president, what he was able to achieve. And they also look at the track record, apart from the track record in government, professional track record, or if you like, uh, 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 the, the, the art of the politics. You also look at their personal trait and personal character. Unfortunately, Mr. John Mahama has got one similar character with that of Mr. Mm. Uh, 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 Mr. Baumia, which is the humility part. That they will square out. I have to give Mr. Mr. John, your, your candidate, that part. But it is clear that Ghanaians will be looking for a leader who is humble, a leader who is not corruptible, a leader who has clarity of vision, a leader who can articulate the vision so well, so much that every single Ghanaian will resonate and move along with that vision. Okay, that clarity. The Ghanaian people also want someone who is tolerant, someone who will accommodate dissent, and someone who will tolerate the views no matter how hurting those views are. Because as a leader, you must move and build a country as a whole, not a section. The Ghanaian people will be looking at diversity, how diversity contributes to national unity. And whether or not the two of these, I mean, these two major contenders, they would, they, they would present themselves with the, because diversity itself is development. Because when you are able to accord of different backgrounds, the opportunity to sit on the table, apart from mainstreaming diversity, you are also ensuring that talents that are, held by minorities are also brought into the national scheme for, I mean, for, uh, for the purposes of national development. So the Ghanaian people will look at that. The Ghanaian people will also look at the issue about how revolutionary the pro policy proposal, because your records is one, your personal conduct is one, but what are the prospects of your policy proposals? The vice president came in with the idea of digitizing the economy, we would contradistinct that from that of the 24-hour economy that is being proposed by Mr. John Mahama, who we'll look at how the Vice President's vision of using the internals of things, leveraging on artificial intelligence, and building on the successes checked by the STEM education in the educational sector, how do we build that together with the TVET education to make sure that people are equipped with the right skills and with the right tools in order to contribute to development. So that vision will have to also be interrogated. The Vice President will also present, and I was happy, when he made a policy proposal in his uh, uh, vision st uh, statement presentation about stemming cost of living. And he was hands on on the matter when he said that inflation in Ghana is as a result of three main things food inflation, housing, and transportation. Dealing with food inflation is not record, it is not rocket, rocket science. Dealing with transportation is not required science. That's why he proposed putting together a policy that will ensure that we move towards green energy and make sure that we contribute in our energy mix using solar energy. The vice president also knew very well that housing is an important issue. And let me even note, the national housing rental scheme was the brainchild of the vice president. And that policy had kick-started by the Minister of Housing. And this policy would have to be fine-tuned to ensure that every Ghanaian have a decent home, if you like, a very affordable home, and there have been discussions on whether or not our housing in Ghana are even affordable or social in nature. But given that me, we must look at the cost of construction of this house, and the vice president has a very clear mind and vision on this particular house. So on the issue of inflation, the vice president, on the issue of macroeconomic stability, it's a policy proposal, and the vice president articulate clearly what his macroeconomic and fiscal policy framework is going to look like. He says that we are going to do a fiscal deficit that is benchmarked against the previous year's revenue, just like the central bank government, um, the central bank law. That strengthen of the fiscal responsibility act is something important, and the vice president clearly articulate. So for me, when you look at the messaging, 
when you look at the, com the, the demeanor and the demeanor of the vice president, when you look at the records of the vice president, and you want to just oppose that with that of the current uh, uh, former president and I mean, presidential candidate of the new, uh, new National Democratic Congress, you will have no doubt as to the choice between the two. So far, Dr. Mahmoudou has demonstrated that he is going to be a photocopier in this campaign. A photocopier because some of the things that he seems to be doing or saying are things that the opposition, led by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, have identified as problems that need to be resolved. Problems that he has created together with uh, His Excellency the President, Nana Akufuadu. So when you hear the NDC and, 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 and His Excellency John Mahama say that e levy is a bad law, then you have Dr. Mahamudu come and say, yes, it's a bad law. Yet, he is the chairman of the economic management team. That is a photocopier to just win an election. President Mahama says the betting law is bad. And he comes to say, yes, I'm the economic management team chair. But yes, I agree, it's bad. And yet he is still sitting in cabinet with His Excellency, the President, the one who introduced these policies. You have His Excellency, the President, John Mahama, say, the size of government is too large. I'm reducing it. He's in government, sitting in cabinet, taking decisions to increase the number of ministers that are appointed. And yet on the campaign trail, he photocopies again. Yes, I agree. The size of government is too big. And so I also intend to reduce the size of government. Yet he's sitting in cabinet and taking decisions with the president to increase the size of government, even when the government has the opportunity to reduce the number of ministers. They fail to take that opportunity and rather, you know, are still appointing new people because the positions are treated like uh, uh, toffees. So every region is entitled to a certain set of toffees. You know, so this one, as for this slot, is for Ashanti region. These slots are for Eastern region. And these slots are for Central region. So it doesn't matter whether the county require those ministers to be at post or not. It must be given to that region. And so it is their entitlement. He sits in cabinet and he takes these decisions with the president, but he comes out on the campaign trail to say, oh, the size of government is too big, and so I'm also going to uh, do something about it. His Excellency, the former president, and inshallah, the next president in 2025, John Mahama, goes on a building the Ghana We Want tour. He started it in the 2020 general elections. That led to the uh, People's Manifesto. And what did Dr. Mahamudu say at the time? Go and check the records. When His Excellency John Mahama was embarking on that retail campaign to pick the views of the ordinary people, he said John Mahama lacked ideas. And that the NDC lacks ideas. And they, they have their ideas. The arrogance. The arrogance. That to, the arrogance to suggest that wisdom resides in the head of one person. That was what he said about the retail campaign that the NDC was embarking upon. But now that he has seen that it is resonating well with the people. He, in a self-serving, you know, manner, uh, 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 claims to be uh, 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 embarking on a retail campaign also. Again, a photocopy, like I said. So clearly, he is going to reduce himself to being a photocopier in this campaign, and he is very much welcome. I'm not surprised that despite the wrangling from a, 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 a Eastern region, like I've already suggested, and Ashanti region, uh, for his running mate slot, uh, there seem to be a force that is also growing to get him to choose a female as his running mate. Only uh, last week and this week, I have watched press conferences from the Ashanti region calling for Freema, uh, the, 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 the chief of staff, to be picked. I've also uh, seen others calling for Natoshi, uh, the district assembly's common fund administrator, from Greater Accra to be picked. Others have said that, oh, uh, they equally have 
women of substance like Osla Usu, Natoshi, and Freeman, but they are not supporting any of these women. But they think that he must choose, you know, a, a, a female. So, in this uh, uh, photocopying skills that he seems to be uh, 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 embarking on in an attempt to deceive the people of Ghana to get elected again, I will not be surprised if he succumbs to this pressure again and choose a running mate, but a female running mate. But that again would have been another, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, pace that has been set for him by his senior brother, uh, John Dramani Mahama. So clearly he is going to be a photocopier in this campaign because he has demonstrated it so far. E. Levy, he's copied, betting tax, he's copied, size of government, he's copied, building Ghana tour, he's now on it, even though he suggested that anybody who embarked on such a tour lacked ideas and that they had the ideas already that they were going to use to transform Ghana. Now he's faced with the choice of choosing a running mate. It's very possible that he will also go for a female running mate. And my brother here says that uh, it is going to be a contest of personalities. Yes, I agree with him. And it's also going to be a contest of, 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 of their records. And he, he identified a number of issues. He said uh, it's going to be about diversity. It's going to be about tolerance. It's going to be about vision. It's going to be about the clarity of, you know, stating those visions. In terms of diversity, the NDC over the years has proven that it is the most diverse party in this country. And that is why the NDC, even in defeat, wins in most parts of this country. In most parts of this country. The NDC on record, even when it is losing an election, tends to win more regions than the NPP. So clearly, the NDC is a party of diversity. It is embraced by the rank and file of you, or if you like, uh, citizens from all walks of life in this country. It is not, you know, concentrated. Its support base is not concentrated in one or two or three regions. It is a diverse, you know, uh, 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 group of people that have come together to form the NDC. So as for diversity, it is with the NDC and it is with its flag bearer. And His Excellency, the President John Dramani Mahama, has demonstrated this in so many ways. And it is not surprising that in that diversity, you find him choosing a female running mate for the first time. For the first time. No major political party like the NDC or the MPP has ever, you know, uh, 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 done that. He's done that. And even as president, it is clear. I mean, the caliber of people that he, he, he appointed. The first time we had a, a physically challenged person, you know, in government was under His Excellency President Mahama. So... In terms of inclusion and diversity, I mean, that is what he represents. When you talk of tolerance, I know no man in politics today in Ghana that is more tolerant and it shows than His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. I mean, just imagine the insults, the ridiculing that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia led others in the MPP to keep on him and not once have you ever had him re respond in like manner not once ridiculing insults that dr mahmoud led the mpp to heap on him he laughs about it he jokes about it and he he, he even in that what you expect him to feel as pain rather cautions and advises him as a younger brother and, 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 and tells him to, to be good, of good behavior. And perhaps it's because he grew up with him and he knows that he wasn't like that until he joined bad company. And so he's able to tolerate it. So when it comes to tolerance, I mean, not under President Muhammad did you have journalists being chased out of this country. His Excellency, the Vice President, is sitting there. And you have him, you know, uh, and his government uh, uh, engage in acts that put every journalist that dares, you know, to, to, to put its, its, its government uh, or to demand accountability from its government uh, 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 at risk. Every journalist that dares to demand accountability from this government is at risk. You can speak to Anas Amiyao Anas and his team. You can speak to Manasseh Azuri. Speak to the Media Foundation for West Africa and others. Even members of civil society organizations have clearly confessed 
not once, that it was safer under President Mahama to criticize the government and that he was more tolerant of divergent views. That his government, because his whole disposition was what, you know, uh, 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 manifested when he was uh, the president of this country and even out of the presidency, he remains that tolerant. And then he talks about vision. And apart from the vision of President Mahama that has saved this economy, even in its very terrible shape as we find it, in the area of health, in the area of, you know, even reforms, economic reforms, gift miss and others, I want to use the same example that he used about um, um, digitalization. I mean, how do you miss the fact that no digitalization can take place in this country without the fiber optic cables that were laid across this country by His Excellency John Dramani Muhammad? How can you miss that visionary decision he took to lay the most fiber cable across the country? How can you miss that visionary decision and talk about, you know, uh, uh, digitalization in, in today's context, in, 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 in today's Ghana? How can you miss that visionary decision of the National Data Center, of the Accra Digital Center, of the e-government services that were started by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama? How do you run a digital economy without these foundations? And so clearly, the vision in the health sector that was championed by His Excellency President Mahama speaks for him. The vision that was championed by him in the digital uh, economy space speaks for him. The vision that he espoused in education till date is still, you know, uh, 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 something that many people appreciate. And clearly, that is the reason why the people of Ghana have come to the realization that we sold our color TV for a black and white uh, TV.